Transform Your Teams is a webinar series brought to you by Invisalign. Invisalign system is the world's most advanced technology for teeth straightening and Invisalign believes in transforming smiles and changing lives. I'm Chavi Mittal and I will be your host for the evening. Now today's topic holds a very special importance in my life. We're going to be talking about how your team can benefit from social media. Now why is it so relevant to me is because I'm somebody who's built an entire career on social media. I'm the co-founder of Shitty Ideas Trending. We are a branded content creation hub and uh, we are the number five, top five uh, uh, creators on YouTube. And we are the number one fiction creator on Facebook all over India. Uh, I also am the founder of Being Woman, which is a community of mothers and of women. So it's lovely. When I say community, I mean all the people that are part of my brand, that are part of my family, all built on social media. And from my experience, if I can... Uh, categorize the people who consume social media into two different categories. Category number one would be of people who are putting themselves out there on the social media for everybody to see who are the influencers. And category two is of people who actually follow these influencers or the people who are getting influenced. And in the second category, I think the vast majority consists of teenagers because teenagers are the most impressionable people around, right? I'm a mother of two and I feel extremely responsible when I think about the fact that someday my kids are also going to be teenagers and they are going to be consuming the social media as much as any other teen out there. So is social media good for teenagers? Is it bad? And if it is bad, then how can we as parents help them to turn it around in order to be able to see a positive aspect to it. Now, these are some of the things that we are going to be talking about today. And for that, uh, let me invite my first panelist, Roshni Chopra, who is a renowned personality in the television industry, who's done numerous popular shows across different genres. I know because I've seen many of them. In addition to her stint with acting, she has also become one of the leading fashion, beauty, and lifestyle influencer on social media and is known for creating engaging and interesting content. Hi, Roshni. Hi. So lovely to have you here and thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you, Chavi. I'm very excited to be here and to catch up with you after so long and to uh, have this amazing discussion, which I think is so relevant in today's time. Yes, and you yourself are somebody who's built an entire successful business model on social media. Very, very eager and excited to hear your thoughts on the matter today. And let me also introduce our second panelist, Dr. Deepak Victor. Uh, he's a highly skilled orthodontist in Chennai holding an experience of 15 years in the dental field. His areas of expertise lie in braces as well as clear aligners. He believes in providing convenient, comfortable and safe orthodontic care to every patient he treats and provides a full range of aesthetic orthodontic procedures such as lingual braces as well as clear aligners. Currently, he has his practice limited to orthodontics both in India and in the Middle East. Dr. Deepak Victor received his formal dental training at Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Science, Bangalore. Following this, he had the privilege to work as an orthodontic resident at the Department of Orthodontics, Minakshi Academy of Higher Education and Research, Chennai, where he received his postgraduate degree in the field of orthodontics and dentofacial orthopedics. He further did the master's program in lingual orthodontics from Kyung Pook National University, Daegu, South Korea, under the guidance of Professor Dr. H.M. Kyung. Since 2016, Dr. Deepak is an Invisalign provider and conducts various events and lectures nationally and internationally. A very warm welcome to you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Javi, for the nice introduction. Welcome to you all. Well, I'm, I must say that this is the, the third webinar, the third and the final webinar of this three-part webinar series. And I have taken away so much knowledge at the end of each webinar, and I'm totally looking forward to interacting with you today as well. Thank you. So uh, I was talking a lot about social media and we can't say whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, right? I think it's a mix uh, of both the things. But in my opinion, it is not wrong to say that most of adults nowadays like us get majority of their information from social media, be it news, be it politics, entertainment, sports, beauty, or anything. Social media is really a part of each and every person's life today. Right. And social media has brought the entire world closer. Now, while we are discussing the benefits or whether it has a negative impact on our lives, I, I want to ask you, Roshni, do you think your teen can benefit from social media? And if yes, then how? 
you know uh chavi a lot of discussion has gone around the fact that oh my god social media has awful pressures and it's it's been given a really bad name and you know most parents are sort of scared of their children going under the wave i think it's really important now because like you said social media is everywhere in fact it's so ingrained in the fabric of society that we live in and it's so much a part of just connecting human beings is that just how you're taught maths physics chemistry you need to be taught you know how to use the internet and social media to your advantage inherently as a tool it's not bad and it's not good it's how you use it and how you decide to ride that wave that will work in either your advantage or disadvantage so you know coming from uh, again like you i also have children of my own and uh, i do my children don't have phones but uh, i do see like my niece and nephew and you know older kids who are in their teens they have their phone and they are constantly like this phone is like an attachment to their hand it's like one extra limb is coming out of the body you know and uh, their parents are constantly saying listen get off the phone get off the phone why are you on the phone and even when i speak to them i'm like can you just look up look up at me while i speak don't be on your phone but um, i think it's very important i think it can be used in a very productive way and i can speak from personal experience it gives me so much joy to be able to share all of my inspirations with the world and feel connected to a community even in a time where we are so isolated right now you know with the pandemic with lockdowns but to just um, to have that communication channel so i definitely think that there's a huge um, potential to be tapped and it can be used positively if we are trained to do so Yes, absolutely. You said it very nicely, Roshni. Because I think there's so many people out there on the social media who are today willing to share so much of their knowledge. And you know, back in the olden days, if I may say so, we only had to rely on experiences that we had on a one-to-one -one basis with people who, who, uh, you know, who who had done something in their lives and who had a lot of knowledge to share with us. But today, thanks to social media, there's so much knowledge out there. You have access. Right? You have access to everything. You know, to the whole yes. world, to art, media, culture, information, anything you put your finger on, you have access. That's power. But I also, I also believe that uh, when we were teenagers, all of us, parents and adults, when we were teenagers, there was no social media for us at that time. So while we are also trying to find our own bearings in the world of social media, imagine how difficult it must be for our teenager to do so. So, doctor, I want to ask you the same question. How do you think, since you work so much with teens, how do you think a teen can benefit from social media today? Yes. So actually, rightfully, you both said the. the point i want to pick is our generation somebody has to teach us whereas the current generation they are born with it <laughs> nobody has to teach them in fact my my daughter teenager she teach me how to handle it so you know it is it's completely you know the equation is shifted now nobody has to teach them and the information is pouring as you said it it's it's just they everywhere it's everywhere and they come to you because they just have to type two words or now you don't have to even type my 4 year old child he just says hey google or hey alexa that's enough you know he just gets all his information you know whatever he needs so coming to the topic of the day i feel there are five points a child can benefit from digital media first thing i would say the child is getting exposed to a lot of important issues and people around the world second it strengthens the relationships you know then it can offer a sense of belonging because especially do now during lockdown you see a lot of us are only online <laughs> nobody is you know physically meeting so definitely it's help us you know to build relationship and sense of belonging it also helps us to seek support if you know a parent with one child sometimes the parent mother will be working uh, the child doesn't have anybody at home so he definitely seek support over the friends over the internet and it also provides you know a good medium to express themselves so that also is a you know important thing i feel so having said all this i would like to share one experience you know what once happened in my you know dental office a kid once walked into my practice and he was asking like for an orthodontic issue so the during the first visit generally what i do is i take all the records like x rays digital x rays and photos so that i can you know understand and know what exactly he needs the problem so i after seeing him and talking to his parents i i thought okay i will propose the conventional braces for him because i thought you know they might not be looking forward for a premium treatment for his child but 
in still i just put in a word regarding the latest digital option you know uh, call invisalign is there uh, all those things and then yes after the consultation the child went back home but this fellow right away he went on to the internet as every normal you know the gen z people does he went on to the internet and just got into the digital technology of invisalign see basically he understood yes the invisalign is it's invisible as the name says it's invisible compared to the braces normal braces it's more comfortable he can remove it he can you know eat all his favorite food he doesn't have any restrictions and you know it's more comfortable he doesn't have to show around the braces when he socializes so he understood all these benefits he immediately convinced his parents he 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 was very sure what he wanted and the next day when they walked back to my office all of them were very clear they wanted to go for invisalign so if you see the brighter side see the so the digital platform or the social media help the child to you know make towards a right investment of choice for him and having said that i also should say that you should you know there are good sides and bad sides but here the child actually you know searched and took a right and wise decision so it is up to us not how to use the social media for a good side or a bad side obviously there is a lot of advantages so basically what you're trying to say is like how i was saying that there's a lot of knowledge nowadays on social media and most of the people get most of their uh, information on social media there is some sometimes you get the right information and sometimes you get the wrong information so once you have all the information that you need you basically judge what is right for you and what is not and then you go about doing it now doc you also very nicely explained uh, how uh, the younger generation and your child who's just all of four is uh, so nicely using uh, all the technology that there is around us today but i also want to bring a little focus on the emotional aspect of social media because i i see that there are a lot of people today on social media who just pretend to be somebody who they're not now it could be uh, by means of filters by means of using beauty filters that just make them look you know unrealistically beautiful or it could also be somebody feigning happiness and for a teenager who's following another person on social media and wondering wow this person looks so happy why am I, am i not that happy it could be a little daunting and i think even as adults when we we are also trying to uh, you know understand what are the things that we should uh, believe when we see on social media and what are the things that we shouldn't believe but i think as people with experience and uh, you know a certain amount of wisdom we can take things with a pinch of salt but i want to ask you roshni that how do you think teenagers can deal with that kind of pressure on social media you know it's not just teenagers i think it's everyone you're so right because you see you wake up in the morning you look at your phone you're suddenly seeing someone is sitting on a beach or someone is using a filter and having this very fake but very you know perfect sense of like everything is in proportion everything is smoothed over no pores are seen and you're vulnerable you believe uh, to a certain extent oh my god this person's life is perfect this person's life is uh, this why am i not doing this why is he driving that car why am i not i mean the comparisons are just endless and they are toxic so i had done a ted talk on uh, the whole idea of self love in the times of social media which spoke about how you know it's not a thing that should make you insecure it's a thing which you should use for self love and to express yourself so i think there are a lot of pitfalls and Uh, we as parents and of course children teenagers a whole community has to understand to read between the lines you see when you're taught language you're taught how to read a b c d e f g i think now you need to learn how to read between the lines read that anyone's uh, instagram or anyone's social media is a highlight reel of what they want to portray read that filters are actually not uh, a sign of perfect beauty but they're a sign of insecurity and of hiding insecurity read that uh, you know if you're bold and if you're brave and if you're confident enough to bear your authentic soul and to find an authentic voice of communication that you will have genuine followers and when i say followers i don't mean people who are following you blindly or following you for a fake life but followers who become a community who become a family so i always say that don't imitate inspire you know uh, don't influence inspire and i think uh, that is something that uh, is a choice and even a choice for people who are using social media like choose the people who don't influence you but who inspire you choose the people where it where you feel happy where you feel like okay you look at someone maybe they're doing fantastic art or maybe they're doing fantastic social work or maybe they're really good at doing makeup whatever it is but they inspire you to 
bring that out in yourself as well. So I think it's very important to um, find that authentic space, seek it out, and to weed away everything that isn't that. That's a wonderful piece of advice. And it's uh, it's relevant not just for the teenagers, but also for adults, Roshni. You have to keep reminding to ourselves. That. Yeah, you know, even I have to keep reminding myself because sometimes you fall into that trap. You just see someone and you're like, oh my God, wow, how lucky. And then you're like, wait, I'm lucky. My hands are working. My legs are working. The sun is shining equally for them, equally for me. I am lucky. You know, you need and to see, remind yourself. Yeah. When you said you need to remind yourself, the, the, my takeaway from that was I need to remind myself that I'm also just a teenager. You know, it's just about how you read what you see on social media. And that's wonderful. And I'd like to share an experience here where uh, where I was approached by uh, an uh, AR filter company and they asked me to design a filter of my own. And I had seen so many filters on Instagram, uh, you know, which are beauty filters and they make your face look like this and that and the other. And I felt that, no, this is not something that I stand for. And I feel that as a parent, it's only a matter of a few years when my daughter is going to be a teenager and she will ask me 100 questions, which I should be able to look her in the eye and answer honestly. And hence I told them that no beauty filter is not something that I'm looking at. I, I you know, rather design a game filter, which kids can play and, you know, not feel insecure about. So, you know, I'm just saying that as parents, what is our responsibility towards our teenagers is also something that we should uh, look at. And, uh, you know, I've just got so engrossed in asking my own questions and totally engrossed in this conversation that I completely forgot to tell my viewers that you will also get a chance to ask a lot of questions of your own. And I'm sure your mind is flooding with questions, as is mine right now. So very soon, I'm going to take those questions. Start sending your questions in the chat box, and I'll be coming right back at you. Meanwhile, doctor, I would like to ask you the same thing. How can teenagers you know, uh, deal with the pressures on social media, in your opinion? Yes, so as mentioned earlier, being an orthodontist, 40% of my patients are young adults or teens. So since the orthodontic treatment is a long-term process, it gives me an opportunity for me to interact with these uh, patients for a longer time during their teen life. And as you both mentioned, these interactions, are, I've noticed the same thing. The exposure to social media and all sorts of digital platforms have influenced them to build their personalities around it. And, you know, one interesting part I have noticed is there are so many apps, you know, you have like the filters to do, you know, the blemishes of your face, contour your body, changing the color of your hair, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But one thing I noticed is there is not even a single app where you can, you know, fix your smile. And a smile is so important in your uh, life. <laughs> so I was also, you know, wondering why nobody has come up with that. <laughs> Anyway, now today's level where social media plays an integral you no know, part in teens' life, wherein looking charming is always a pressure for them, and uh, we we must not encourage uh, teens to make these kind of comparisons. And as parents, we should you know always support them, support them to help them in improving their feelings of being you know well being. Having said that, I I I would you know uh, uh, a person's social image is how they perceive by others, and building a visual brand identity has become a vital role in today's world. Moreover, uh, you know young people are especially sensitive to issues concerning their physical appearance, and you know I have the options of you know always they compare with their you know what are their my friends doing. So in uh, one way of dealing, I uh, know. Uh, so one of, um, I would say, one of the best way to deal with this is, you know, to get your smile corrected, which is which, you know, no other app has, you know, come up with till now. So you can, you know, get your smile corrected uh, with all now all this latest technology. Orthodontist treatment is not like wires and brackets. You can, you know, the Invisalign is given a cutting edge now. With Invisalign's advanced technology, we can digitally create your smile even before you start your treatment using the intraoral scanning and the Invisalign outcome simulator. And the Invisalign also have a smile view app wherein you can, you know, uh, potentially visualize your potential, you know, post-treatment social smile. So all these things, improving your smile will, you know, definitely at least give oneself a good self-esteem and, you know, make them feel good. So I feel... You know, you you know uh, the today's social because of this all this looking good pressure on social media, improving your smile has definitely a cutting edge for them. And obviously, improving your smile not only aesthetically, it also helps in you know general health also. 
so that way i feel you know it's a good option for you <clears throat> to get your teeth corrected wow so you know i'm really uh, you, it brought a smile to my face when you said that there is no app right now that can just give you a good smile you can have pouty lips and you can have a, a you know a sun kissed glow on your face but nothing is going to give you a good smile unless you actually uh, address that issue yourself which is amazing because i think that is something that brings today's teenagers face to face with reality and if there is something that can be nipped in the bud then you should just do it there and then so that in future you don't have to deal with that issue and it's such a simple solution to a problem which can be a big problem later uh, in life right so okay moving on uh, i i want to say that there are so many things which happen on social media okay we're talking about filters we are talking about fake lives we are talking about inspirational people and we are talking about people like you roshni who inspire so many others so i want to ask you roshni that what are the opportunities that a teen Uh, can can be face to face with when on social media you know uh, i think it's fantastic now because earlier there was this whole sort of formal thing of going out into the world post your education then interning or or starting at a very junior position and climbing your way up and that was the sort of conventional uh, career graph that we were taught uh you know as kids who were in educational institution today with the democratization of um, uh entrepreneurship i feel you know social media has made entrepreneurship uh, available and accessible to any person who wants to go out there and create uh, a business create a presence create a movement i know so many teenagers um in you know within my children's school my niece my nephew who are doing fantastic work they already have side gigs side hustles happening with their um education where they are either expressing themselves creatively where they are creating businesses out of um you know artistic their artistic skills and all of that is open for you at the age that you want to start at you can be as young as 13 and have uh you know be supporting a social media cause or be supporting a charity you can be as young as 16 and be designing t-shirts and selling them and these are people that i know are doing that so i feel your social media really becomes your business card and you become the brand of whatever your business is so whether it is a artistically inclined business whether it is you know about music about dance about entertaining about um finance i mean it could be any uh, thing you are the face of your brand so like dr deepak you are the face of everything that you are standing for and and all these amazing technologies of invisalign that you are telling us just like that any other child teenager who starts their own business is going to be the face so coming back to you know how important it is to be able to ride this wave to be able to use it to be able to express your creativity and to be able to if you have it in you to be able to channel your entrepreneur skills um i think it's a big big uh, advantage it's a big democracy right now it's a big opportunity and it's one that we should make our children more aware of wow very well said and i think today uh, you don't have to be famous to be famous i mean it's just as simple as that you have a world of opportunity in front of you on social media it's just about how you tap it and i think all of us uh, the viewers uh, all of us parents we play a huge responsibility when it comes to guiding our teenager how to understand the social media you know we are also doing it and both of us can do it together as a family why not what do you have to say doctor yes exactly so the opportunities are you know with the social media and the digital platform there is n number of opportunities i uh, rightfully what uh, roshni was saying i i personally know two people who has done exceptionally well so uh, uh, in, now i am i'm forced to you know share that with you let me introduce first yamini prasad a beautiful girl presently studying in ntu singapore i know her since her teens she used to publish you know she is an author she published four books and also she is done a ted she is also a tedx speaker at the age of 13 now uh, let me share how this because i gone through her teens and i i have seen her growing in it so uh, after her first book she used the social media to invite the people you know all the people uh, for her next book launches through social media and based on these you know all the social media platform pages 
the tedx organizers got interested they called her and invited her as speaker so through this social media she from a normal kid in a school she is changed into a you no know, a celebrity so that that again another child uh, mr ankit gupta he's a 12th standard child in shishya school chennai and again i know him personally so much he he's released he is a musician he started releasing songs in spotify and itunes and till now he has released almost 70 plus songs and one album and for him now let me you know during this pandemic last year when all of us were indoor ankit was you know doing a project called 7500 and it's a multilingual hip hop song which has 14 languages in it six indian and eight international languages so uh, which you know this went on to accumulate guinness book of world record indian book of records and the most number of international languages in a single song that title so it's it's you no know, during pandemic when all of us were in he went on to create records so he used the digital platforms in the you know right way uh, and so i would say the lockdown never locked him up in fact you know he it, it influenced he influenced the power of social media maximum during that time so all i want to say is it's up to each individual how they can use the social media or the digital platform in favor of achieving greater heights again this automated system and algorithms in our internet it's so easy to get information what we need so definitely i would say the teens have immense opportunity which our generation never had so i i really feel you know they are lucky than us true true absolutely and i love the way that you've given these beautiful examples of a combination of using social media and enhancing your own confidence because at the end of the day i think it's the confidence which makes the maximum difference whether you're on social media or whether it's real life and nowadays you have this real life versus real life your reality versus what you portray on social media but i think if you don't have confidence then you can never look confident anywhere and if you have confidence it's going to help you in every sphere and every aspect of your life so doctor this question is for you how do you think orthodontics especially help your team find more confidence okay so uh, as we were discussing about the filters and physical uh, you know appearances and all those things these days teens are so much you know obsessive with about their looks and all those things a lot of times in my dental office parents bring their child sometimes the child might not be even you know ready for an orthodontic treatment but the in fact the more than the child or the pa- parent is more you know uh, you know I, the main reason is they feel the looks of the child you know they're not they're not good looking they want the teeth is jetting out they feel you no know, my child is one i want my child to be more beautiful so not even teens even parents are also you know uh, concerned about the looks yes definitely an orthodontic treatment will improve you know the smile which you know improves the self esteem even last last week i had a child who refused to attend online class because they were online bullying her because of her buck teeth so it's you know even when when the schools are shut also even online there are children you know they get bullied each other so this because of this issue i feel a child especially a teen teen when they are developing they'll have a lot of psychological issues because of their you know smile and all those things so i feel improving their smile will definitely give them confidence and you know uh, self esteem so that they can interact and be more confident in their work yeah and doctor yeah. i just want to uh, chavi if i may i just want to add to that as well that um, you know this whole thing about confidence and about looks Uh, earlier it used to be thought oh if you're going to be an actor then it's okay to go and get your smile corrected and if you're taking a career in the arts and you know you're going to be in front of screen then it's okay to be uh, to go and get your hair colored and to do whatever cosmetics you have to do but now the thing is that every career and every opportunity and every sort of field whether you know it's astrophysics or whether it's reading the news uh, is sort of connected via the web i mean all of us in the last 2 years have seen more of our colleagues more of our you know chartered accountants more of our doctors on the web so everything is really uh, and if there is technology to help you look the best that you can look then why not use it i mean why just for teens i'd be happy to come and have my teeth invisalign too <laughs> 
Yes, absolutely. And it's uh, uh, for all the people who are now, uh, you know, seeing themselves online, like you said, there's so many people who've come on the web. If any of these people had the opportunity to get their teeth uh, straightened when they were teenagers, I'm sure they must be regretting it a lot right now. But thankfully, doctor, correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong, that there is no uh, age limit to the treatment, no right? Limit. It's never too late. If I have a patient who is 65 years as well as a patient who is 10 years. Wow, so the future for all of us is bright. Yes. And anybody who's interested in uh, getting it done now has an absolute chance of doing it. Yeah. And also I want to add to this, uh, to what you just said, Roshni, when we talk about looks, and this is to all the viewers out there, mm-hmm. when we talk about looks, it is not just your physical appearance that we're talking about. We're talking about your confidence and your personality and your look. Your looks become an inseparable part of your personality. So if there is such a small price that you have to pay uh, in order to have a great personality and to boost your confidence level, then why not? And with this, I'm going to move on to the first question uh, from the audience. Uh, Roshni, this question is for you. How to deal with a team who's addicted to social media to a point where it's affecting their academic performance? I think it's really important to set boundaries just because they're teenagers doesn't mean they get a free ride and they can be on their TV or I mean on their phone or on their computer the whole time. You need to mutually uh, sit, discuss and set a boundary and say, okay, even if it's your phone and you get it for X amount of time, you get it after you finish your uh, school assignments and you get more time if you do better and if you finish more on time. So set up a reward system them as well even though they are teenagers and they can sound very much like uh, grown-ups they are still babies they are not fully grown up and they do need parenting and they do need advising but I think rather than doing it in a forceful manner where you're yelling and shouting and you know getting into combat situations it's much nicer if you can sit discuss through and amicably amicably uh, decide between the two of you, you know, parent and child, something that you both agree on and uh, attach a sense of achievement uh, uh, to their, um, you know, academic and other interests. So whenever they are uh, displaying that or whenever they're doing that, you know, uh, I use this even with my kids, it's positive strokes. So say like, give them extra love of extra appreciation when they're doing that so that it will, uh, it'll kind of trigger that, okay, that's what gets me uh, the love, attention and appreciation. And ultimately all human beings respond to positive strokes. So I would say, try and do that. Yes. And I'd like to add to that, that uh, as a parent, I think it is also our responsibility to to strike the correct balance between their actual real life that they have with you uh, as opposed to the life that they're experiencing on social media. So that also helps a lot. And uh, the next question again is for you, Roshni. What advice would you give to someone who wants to emulate your career and become an artist? So uh, I'd say it's amazing. Firstly, find what, you know, maybe the five things that your uh that come within your core strength. So whatever they may be, I mean, in my case, I do believe it's, um, you know, beauty, fashion, lifestyle. These are things that I have just been consumed with all of my life. And so now I'm finally trying to uh, kind of, uh, you know, find some, some value that I can add to other people who might be looking for that kind of information and trying to make my content uh, not just something that you see and you say, ha, acha hai, but something that you see and you either get inspired or you're able to learn something or you get entertained. So it's really important. And these are things I always ask myself before putting anything out. Is it entertaining? Is it informative? Is it um, meaningful? Is it me? Um, and uh, don't try and emulate someone. It's great to have points of, uh, you know, reference where you're like, oh, something like this, but try and find your inner authentic voice. So, you know, what is the, what are the things that you really like, even if it's fashion, even if it's beauty in that there's such a big um, scope to decide, you know, is it green, clean beauty? Is it electric colors? Is it monochrome? What is your uh, signature? And uh, any artistic person needs to constantly endeavor to go within themselves to find what are their inspirations, what what is that point that is unique to them, and then find a way to communicate that. So I'd say um, that do that, you know, sit down, write down on a piece of paper, who are you? What do you have to give and share with the world? And what's the best way in which you can do it? And what are your unique gifts? And then uh, take it forward from there and wish you all the best. 
And I want to add to that, Roshni, that, uh, to the viewer who asked this question, that there can only be one Roshni Chopra. You can either be better than her or you can be different from her. So you have to find your own voice and try to define your own identity if you're trying to be an artist. And that's also the beauty of being an artist. Yeah, there and I don't even think rules. it's better. So, sorry to interject, but I don't think it's better or I don't think it's worse. You be the best version you can be. And that's what Absolutely. makes it amazing. Yeah, and as an artist, thankfully, there are no defined rules. There, are, there is no set roadmap that you can follow. You have to just follow your heart. And the next question, Roshni, is very uh, something I also want to know the answer to from you, is how do you handle trolls on your social media profile? Firstly, you know, I don't have many trolls. I have to tell you that I'm very lucky and very blessed that my community seems to be extremely loving and full of love and light and positivity. The one odd person who comes who says something weird, I very respectfully kind of um, tell them that this is your point of view and this is my space. And if you're not um, connecting with my content, then you know, feel free to leave. And um, if they have a point which may be valid, sometimes, you know, uh, people have a point which is different to yours, which which may be valid. For example, what you spoke about filters earlier in your AR company, I have four filters, two of them, are, no, one of them is beauty, one of them is moods, one of them is words. And I'm okay with all of that, you know, so each person differs. I think, and each person, uh, like for me, I'm really liberal, right? So I try not to judge the other person and I, tr I don't take the other person's judgment on me uh, seriously either. So I'm like, you do you, I'll do me. If you like me, you can hang out on my space. Otherwise, adios. So I think it's and important to take it with a pinch of salt because if you take everything everyone says too seriously and that includes the compliments, you know, if you take all the nice compliments so seriously, you're going to have a head so swollen, you won't be able to enter your front door. So I think it's important to take everything with a pinch of salt. And my favorite, favorite line to hold on to is this shall pass too. So the joy, the highs, the lows, the fears, they're all impermanent. They come and they go. So it's important not to hang on and take too, anything too seriously. And like I said at the beginning of the session, that uh, of all the social media consumers today, we can categorize them into two different categories. I think I want to make a correction there. It's three different categories. And the category three is solely of trolls whose sole purpose in life is to be on social media and say something to upset somebody out there. So I just want to tell all the teenagers out there, we as adults also have our own highs and lows when we try to handle such, such kind of uh, comments or feedback. But there is something that you have to understand. It is that you cannot please everybody out there. Just try to make yourself happy and just cater to your own TG and the own your own group or the family of uh, uh, people that you've created for yourself and also learn to differentiate between negative criticism and constructive criticism because constructive criticism is something that will benefit you but negative criticism is just that troll that third category that's out there to get you and my next question is to doctor um, this person wants to know my daughter is 13 years old is this the right age for getting a checkup done how can I start Invisalign treatment and what is the cost uh, so, uh, see, first thing, let me say, tell you, there is no definitive age for, uh, you know, uh, uh, whether it is Invisalign or whatever the, basically, orthodontic treatment. See, we actually assess the child from the very beginning. It generally, normally, every child will go for a general dental checkup at least once in a year. So, if something comes up with the general dentist, he generally refers to the orthodontist. But if at all you are not doing, but still you find yourself there is something wrong with her teeth, you can very well, at, even at the age of six or seven also, you can get him to a, or her to an orthodontist. I would say if at all you have never gone for a consultation, please, you can take your child, if it is at least seven, you can definitely go take uh, you know, your child for a, a normal orthodontic consult. Basically, because uh, when the teeth are developing, the orthodontist can, you know, well identify if at all they are, you know, developing in the normal way, there, there is any growth retardation or any other, you know, issues happening. It's always better to prevent than rather than making a situation worse and getting it corrected. So at any age, you can go for a consult. And if there is anything relevant, the orthodontist will put up and then you can start the treatment. Now, regarding the cost, the cost varies because pertaining to issues, it varies from you know, each individual. 
so there is no definitive cost like that it, uh, it it's purely pertaining to the issue a mild issue will be very cheap but there as in a you know, severe conditions may you might need multiple procedures other than in this line also other dental procedures also might be required so then it might be expensive okay so what i understand is that because this session is all about the social media we've only sort of focused on the personality and the looks and the confidence aspect of it but getting your teeth aligned or getting your teeth corrected is not just about that it is also about uh, avoiding certain other medical issues that you could have later in life and you could just sort of get them fixed when you're a teenager doctor the next question is also for you i just would like to add one thing a simple thing a child no you sometimes you might have seen your child No, is opening the mouth and sleeping in the night. So we call it mouth breathing. So you might feel okay, it's normal. Maybe her nose is blocked or something. But a mouth breather in long term can cause even respiratory infection. As uh, Chavi was saying, there will be other general health issues which can raise because of a simple dental condition. So as you rightly said, you should not leave even the simple thing because it may, you know, later on become a major issue. Okay. Thanks, doctor. The next question uh, is again for you. I'm a for, I'm forty years old. I have gaps in my teeth. Can they be corrected? Definitely yes. Only issue is I forty years is not a big age. As I mentioned earlier, I have a patient who is sixty five. So definitely not an issue. Only one thing we have to look is we have to take the X ray and check whether your bone conditions are good enough to undergo a orthodontic treatment. the only you know uh, side side to side is if there is any <coughs> issues regarding your uh, bones then we might have to do treatment for that first and then come for the orthodontic treatment but otherwise at any age you can do orthodontic treatment i'd also like to add here that i also got myself uh, examined by an orthodontist recently i'm also 40 and he also <laughs> recommended certain treatments which i'm definitely going to be considering mm -hmm. uh, if it's going to help me in the longer run it's not about correcting my smile but something he said about the bite functionality you were functionality exactly exactly there is function as well as aesthetics so aesthetics might be you, you already have a beautiful smile but maybe function is not <laughs> correct <laughs> function is not correct overall you know longevity of your teeth they they get abraded faster you get sensitivity so all those other issues pop up so functionality also is important aesthetic is also important thanks doctor thanks for the compliment and i can completely uh, going keep going on with this conversation with both of you but unfortunately we're almost out of time and i'd like to thank you roshni and dr deepak victor for shedding light on this complex subject there is so much more that we can talk about and i want to share with all my viewers that this was the third webinar of a three part webinar series by invisalign and even in the previous sessions we had some amazing discussions on some very relevant topics uh, in the first session we spoke about peer pressure and self image issues faced by teens and we were joined by author priya kumar and dr tapasya kapoor uh, in the second webinar we spoke about investments and investments not just in terms of finance but also in terms of investment on your own personality and how you can make an investment in your teen's personality so that the teen can benefit from it in the long run and all these uh, uh, webinars are very very inspiring for me and i took away so much from these webinars i'm so glad that i was a part of the three uh, webinars and i hope that you guys also had a lot to take away and before winding up this session i would just like to say that um just the way it's never too late to sort of correct your smile and take that treatment it is also not too late to start adapting the best social media practices because we as parents if we learn only then can we teach our kids and on that note all of us signing out love and peace from us to you bye bye